In round four of Tata Steel Masters, Pragnananda defeated the current world champion Ding Liren and becomes the world number 11 and India number one. Coincidentally, Pragnananda defeated Ding Liren in the same tournament last year, that too in the fourth round itself. Let's see how he managed to do this. E4, E5, Ding plays knight f3, Prag plays knight c6, and now we have the ruler opus. A6, bishop back, and knight f6. And now D3, uh, one of the lines that stops the martial attack. So bishop c5, castles, and b5. All theory, d6 and c3. So white is preparing d4. Prag plays h6 first. Rook e1, castles, knight d2, bishop b6, and knight f1. So white has done all the normal things that you do in a royal opus. The knight has made a long journey and it's going to g3 or e3. And d4 is ready to go. Knight e7. Prague also reroutes his knight to the g6 square. a4. Rook b8. h3. And knight g6. Here comes knight g3. Pawn c5. Generally in the royal opus, while white plays on the king side or in the center, Black tries to create play in the queen side by gaining space. And that's what Prague has done here with c5. Bishop e3. This was the slight error that Ding Liren made. After which Prague just took control of the game. You might think what is wrong with bishop e3. The uh, correct move here would have been d4. Or after takes, takes, then d4. It was important to strike in the center. But bishop e3, the problem is Prague now plays c4. And Prague's point is after bishop takes, he takes with the rook. It's an awkward move, right? Why would someone take with the rook when the queen can take and come to a good square? The difference between taking with the rook and taking with the queen is the b2 pawn. So after here, if pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, now the rook can take on b2. And black has an advantage. If you take with the queen, if you take with the queen, takes, takes, and bishop takes. And if you take here, just rook to, oh wait, then d6 pawn hangs. That's another point. Rook b1 is also good for white because after takes, 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 white has an active rook. That's one possibility for white and this is even better for white. Black queen is out of play. So that is why rook took on b6. Now here, Ding Liren plays bishop back, but now Pragnanada has got a lot of space on the queen side and he builds on it. He plays queen c7, takes, takes, bishop back, takes, takes, knight comes to f4 because there's no dark squared bishop. That's a good square for the knight. Knight e2, takes, takes, bishop e6, the final piece comes into the game. Knight g3 and now comes b4. Prag unleashes his queen side attack with the b4 push. Takes, takes, b2 is soft. It's a target. Uh, Ding Liren attacks d6. So there's no time to take on b2 yet. He goes rook b6. Queen a3. And now rook b8. b2 is almost falling. Rook d2 defending it for now. Knight e8. So that the d pawn is defended. And if you add one more attacker, this would fall. Unless white defends. So how do you add the attacker? We can play queen b7, rook a6 and uh, get that plane. There's also rook b3 coming. So it's very uh, nice for black. White's play on the king side is nowhere. Uh, it hasn't reached anywhere. Rook b3, queen is pushed back and now queen b6. Knight f1, giving up the b2 pawn. So what happens if you play rook to b1? That's an interesting question. So if uh, rook to b1, the b pawn is defended sufficiently. But there is a problem, tactical problem. G3 is hanging. The pawn is defended by the, I mean, pinned by the queen. So that is why there is no way to play rook b1 yet. So here, knight went to f1 to defend the g3 knight. And now rook takes b2. So Prague combines tactics on the king side to take the pawn on uh, the queen side. And now he is a pawn up. So after takes, 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 takes. We have an endgame which is just one pawn up, but uh, the active rook and the bishop is enough to press for black, for Prague. Ding plays knight e3. Here, the best move 
according to the engine would be h4 so what is the line so let's say h4 you can't play h5 so knight f6 would be a normal move for black and now you can go knight e3 and uh, the knight is coming to f5 so g6 is kind of forced and now rook d1 so this is the best line for white but even here uh, prep should be able to press forever so he he goes knight e3 does dingleren and now g6 stopping knight f5 rook a1 bishop a2 a very nice move computer would not like it so computer would play it clinically like very technically but from a human viewpoint to win this you have to somehow get rid of this activity if that rook becomes active it becomes difficult to win with the extra pawn the extra mm -hmm. pawn is not even passed yet so here bishop a2 is a beautiful move even though engines don't like it much it's still better for black but uh, this is practically a very nice move the uh, reason is it forces the exchange of rooks the king can't move yet because then f2 would fall and you can't attack the rook with the knights in any way there is knight h1 but the rook has enough space over here so pawn h4 and now pawn h5 and here f3 getting ready to move the king so that rook b1 doesn't come but uh, now is the chance for prep to play rook b1 that was his whole point takes takes and knight e2 this is easier to play uh, for a win for black because you have the bishop against a knight and the bishop can cover a lot of light squares and help the pawns so practically that was a very good decision to go for the exchange of rooks now bishop a2 king moves here knight c3 is recommended by the engine there's also g4 trying to exchange of more pawns but even there it's better for black king f2 you can't fault ding for activating his king but it also activates the king knight c3 bishop goes to b3 and now knight d5 again g4 is one of is the best option because it uh, forces the exchange of some pawns he goes knight d5 now bishop takes knight takes and f5 the pawns are rolling pawn f4 this idea being if you take here the king gets into the game faster by taking on e4 and if you take here knight will take anyway so uh, what should prague do just king f7 just activates the king and after takes 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 two connected pass pawn i mean one pass pawn but two connected pawns this uh, is not a hard job for prague now it's winning so prague is down to 41 minutes enough time on the clock to win this king e6 knight moves knight comes in so it's uh, here it becomes completely winning for prep king f3 would have been a better choice but uh, it's sort of allowing this uh, check and uh, knight check so it's not easy to play king f3 completely understandable ding wanted to play king e2 and now knight jumps in knight goes back and f4 uh, normally you would not want to exchange too many pawns here but uh, uh, prague has calculated everything prague has judged everything to perfection and he goes for the pass pawn f4 takes takes king f3 king f5 now why doesn't sukswan as is the case in many knight in games you have to either move the king or the knight king went back by itself and now knight went back king g4 is so tempting why did prague not play king g4 let's find out there might be a reason knight h2 check can we not take this yeah then knight h2 king takes this king f3 and suddenly the pawn goes and that's a draw so prague wouldn't want that he went for knight back the king already is active before we go in the knight comes to the best place possible which is okay now the king comes in white knight moved away the aim for black was to come here so that the pawn can push forward if you do it now is knight e5 good the pawn and game takes 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 the king f3 is winning for black it's an extra pawn king will get in what about moving the knight the game goes on so anyway prague want, wanted to get his king in because the knight was already ready to go in so king g4 king moves and takes and now two pass pawns king f3 king comes back the h pawn is just too fast king f5 knight check pawn push pawn check and king comes in and here ding leren resigned and this is the second time prague is the second player from india to have defeated a reigning world champion 
Apart from Anand, only Prag has done that feat. <laughs>